Hi there everybody, it's Halsey from Slim and Stylish and I'm a UK Stamping Up Independent Demonstrator. Thank you for joining me today. Today is a Christmas project using an old set. This was in the Autumn Winter Catalogue last year and it's gone into the Annual Catalogue this year so it's still available. But with all the new Christmas goodies coming out, I feel it's getting forgotten and I love this set. So I'm redoing it and I'm doing it in mass production. I am making this card. I don't know if you can see on there how glittery it is. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. But I am mass producing this card. I'm trying to get, I'm selling them in packs of five in the acetate boxes for a Christmas fair. So I want to try and get as many of them done in as quick a amount of time as possible. So I've decided to use the Stamparatus. I am minimally using it. And I'll show you how, and it just, well it made these within seconds. So all I did is cut all of my white topper card. That is a centimetre smaller than it should be. So I have got the base card just here. It's a piece of A4 paper cut in half. So that's 10.5 centimetres by 14.8 centimetres. This is 14 point, no sorry, this is 13.8 centimetres and 9.5 and centimetres. And then I've got some Backbury Bliss. No. Oh my gosh, Rich Razzleberry. <laughs> I'm not doing well here. And that is 14.3 centimetres and 10 centimetres. So it just fits like that. And let me just score this down. You can see how it fits. So it is just a perfect layer on top of there. I have also cut up some small pieces of Whisper White and Rich Razzleberry. So this is five and a half centimetres by six centimetres. And this is six centimetres by six and a half. So it also fits on with the same framing. Okay, I'm going to show you how to use a Stamparatus to get this quickly made up. And honestly, it takes seconds. It's great. So I'm using the bottle, the glass, and these two stamps. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, but if the white runs out, I'll drink red with the holly. And I'm using a new method of watercolour in that my uplines taught me, so I'll show you how to do that. So with your Stamparatus, I put in... I've took the top out because I'm only using the side. It's really simple that this card is. So I'm popping in my sheet of card that is cut up and I'm just going to put the magnets over the side. I know that I want this glass, this bottle and this glass next to each other at this side of the card. So what I did is I used the grid. You can see the grid just there. I've lined this up straight along the grid and straight along the grid here that is towards the bottom of the card. So when you look over the top it gives me the same frame and that's how I lined it up. You can line it up by putting your stamp, so I've, this is the snowman from the snowman set. You can line it up by putting him on, working out where you want him. I folded it over so that those aren't dirty in my paper. Pick him up and you know he'll always stamp there. But I actually placed the bottle and the glass on the Stamparatus purely because I wanted them straight. Use your stamp case to put underneath it and it gives you a nice firm And you just want to memento that up and stamp. Brilliant. Move the magnets, move your sheet of paper, put your next piece of paper in and go again. Tip number one, don't let the magnets touch each other. They are really strong, really strong. Lots of people have wrapped them in washi tape um, so that they don't stay as strong. Up to you just going to turn that over because I've got a bit of icky on the bottom there. I don't want that to be shown on my card. Okay, the next tip, when I inked this, I only purposely inked half of it so that it did that. And it faded at the top. Well, that's okay because this is in exactly the same place so you will get the same ink. So ink it back up again and this will go in the correct place just like that. Move it back out, put it through, pop another one in. And every single card 
will be identically the same. Okay, so that's how I did that very quickly using the Stamparatus. So now that I have my base card, the new watercolouring trick that I'm going to show you is pretty nifty. I really like it. Um, my upline Sam from Poodles showed me exactly how to do it and it's so pretty. You want your watercolour pens, so I've got Ridge Razzleberry to match the cardstock and Calypso Coral for the, the top of the bottle. And you want to go as dark as you possibly can around the shaded areas and then just blend the rest in. It doesn't matter if you're not up close to the lines because you're going to be using the water to get it in. I always think watercolouring looks so messy when you start off with it. Okay, I'm just going to go over it again because I want it nice and dark. There we go. And the same with the bottle. Just up there, really dark on the shaded bits. going to go over the lines on this one I can feel it because I'm doing it so you're watching I don't want to have my head in the way and I don't want to be taking ages because you're watching a video so uh, I can feel it coming and over the lineness fingers crossed so just keep colouring it around make sure it's darker on the shaded bits but still you want colour elsewhere and then just make sure you've got pencil sharpeners ready if you're doing quite a few because by the time you push this much all of the uh, the lead's gone just gonna very faintly just fill that in there I knew I knew there'd be a line I went over knew it Preempted that really, hadn't I? I set myself up for it. Okay. And then I'm just going to do exactly the same with the Calypso Coral at the top. Really dark along the shaded side, and then just just lightly colour the rest in. Isn't that the messiest colouring you've ever seen? Don't worry, it will look great. Instead of using your blender pen or your aqua marker, which I usually use and I love, some use the Wink of Stella. And it's great because it gives the watercolour that sheen. I don't know whether you can properly see, I'm trying to move it more to the light so you can see it. Hopefully you can see that that is shining. And to do that, let me see if I can move you in. I don't think, I, oh I can, I can. There we go, I'll move you in so you can see what we're doing. I never knew I could do that. You just want to now grab the colour, like you would with a blender pen or aqua marker, but just colour it in. So I said you don't have to worry about going right to the edges because you'll capture it with your the glitter. go over it in one direction now so that it looks neat and tidy. Your watercolouring when you're doing the pencils can be in any direction but when you're using the colour over the top you need to make sure it looks nice. It can't just be in any any which way otherwise it does look messy. There we go. Such a good tip. She used the Seasons um, Blended Seasons stamp set and she did some gorgeous flowers with it. They look beautiful, she did some purple ones, really nice. Um, I really love this set. It was actually gifted to me by my upline last year. It's a great thing about joining Stampin' Up, you get some really good friendships going and um, also you get rewarded. So, um, you know, if you're doing alright, 
people pop you a thank you or a, or a well done and my upline's very very good at doing that um, and then I try to follow her example but yeah so just colour around there go and blend it in I don't think I put as much colour down here I hope I'm still in the screen because I, I know I um, I zoomed in. I hope you can still kind of see what I'm doing. With this, exactly the same as your Aquamarker or your blender pens, you do need a scrap piece of paper just so that you can get the colour out the nib of the pen so that when you move on to a different colour, you're not doing rich razzleberry over your Calypso coral. Okay. Are you all... Oh, I'm doing that thing again where I move the paper and I'm not sure if you can see. Hopefully you can. All right, so that is how glitzy that watercolouring's made it. What you can do in addition, I've got one I did here, is you can watercolour and then you can use your fine tip glue pen over the top and it makes that like an enamel. So it's really got a sheen on it. I'm not doing that on this because I just think there's enough on the card as it is. Okay, so then just the two layering pieces that has the sentiment on. I did the same as what I've done on the Stamparatus, but I did it on a on a block. I put the two stamps on exactly where I want them positioned. Ink them up. Oh, I've done that off the camera. Let me zoom back out and I'll tell you what I've done so you can see it again. Are we back out now? Back out all the way? Not sure. Um, I lay the stamps onto the block in the direction and position I wanted them the same as you would on the Stamparatus but I just did it on the block because it is quite a small piece of paper we're using and um, I don't want to upset my measurements okay and then where's that scrap piece of paper I had pop that underneath because I want the holly just off the side like that and then with the holly I use the lemon and lime Twist watercolour pencil with the old olive one around the edge to give it a bit of dimension and colour. Which Razzleberry berries. Exact same trip came in with the with the um, Wink of Stella to make it really glittery. I like glitter at Christmas. It's it's good and I love this. I would never have thought to have used Wink of Stella instead of a blender pen or an aqua marker. So quite like it. Just... Oh, I did that a bit too quick. Mess my grid paper up. Do you know that stamping up grid paper is reversible? So if you do mess it up, you can always pull it off the pad and turn it over. And on the other side, for UK people, it's in centimetres. So if you look at it all the time and think, oh, I don't use inches in anything, my measurements are never inches, stamping up grid paper has centimetres on the back of it. It's very handy, I think. Oh, move that. There we go. And then just stick that down on your card base. Grab some dimensionals. I only used two on this because you can put one in each corner, but you only really need to. It sticks it up enough. Save where you can. 
pop it up in the corner and why is that done that I must not have left it that much that big a gap last time let's move it over a little bit and there we go there's our card it's quite quick and easy to put them together to make a whole host of them and um, like I said I'm looking to make quite a few and pop them in our acetate card boxes they are these and they hold about five cards that's a different card I've made for Christmas but they're ideal for craft fairs if you're doing them but the Stamparatus definitely makes it a lot quicker just to churn out all of the same image so that you get the same sort of cards going in. And that glittery watercolour, I love. Thank you for teaching it me, Sam. And um, I hope you enjoy. All the details are on my blog, and I'll see you soon. And don't forget the old stamps, they're just as nice as the new ones, especially this set. Thanks, everybody. Bye.